Do you remember this wonderful view? Well, if you watch my previous video from Spanish countryside of two months ago, you already know that I returned back to Ingrid's house. By the way, I'm not alone here. I'm with her lovely cat. Ingrid has a birthday, she turns 28 years old, and of course I just couldn't miss this event, and I just must have come here. <laughs> and Ingrid and I are gonna visit some wonderful places, we're gonna explore more of Spain, or better say Catalonia, and of course I'm gonna share with you more cultural aspects of life here. So, let's go! <laughs> just look at this adorable cat! <laughs> In case you forgot the name of the village, who oh, is so cute here? Oh, come on, come on, come on! I'm, I'm not interrupting. Ingres village is surrounded by vineyards from all the sides, and when I've been there two months ago in the middle of April. The leaves didn't appear on the vineyards yet. Well, right now they appeared and... Oh my god, my friends, it looks absolutely stunning. Let me show it to you. Right now Ingrid is working and myself I'm finishing the new video about Ibiza. I hope you already watched this and enjoy it. And before I return back to my work, I decided to share one cultural difference that I found just a few hours ago. Once again, it's Ingrid's birthday and she asked a small present, so it's not super expensive. That's why I also decided to buy flowers, because come on, for me it's a bare minimum. Uh, and when I came with the flowers to her, she was picking me up on the train station around five hours ago. She was so surprised. I mean, she was smiling, she, she was happy with the flowers, but she told me that she never received flowers before, because in Spain it's not common to give flowers. And I asked, what about the boyfriends? Because in Russia it's absolutely normal that a guy would give flowers to the girl on some dates or some special occasions. And actually it's just common for the guy to bring flowers to the girl without any reason. For example, in my family, my granddad and my stepfather always bring flowers to me and to my mom on International Women's Day and on the birthday. Really, it's just such a bare minimum. And in Spain it's absolutely not common. Even in the relationship, I'm so surprised about this. Really, boys, bring flowers to girls if it's common or not, because Ingrid was smiling and it's always so, I don't know, it's, it's nothing, you know, it's 15 bucks for a very small bouquet, but it really improves the mood. So, boys, please be gentlemen and bring flowers to the girls. And right now I will continue working. Hopefully I'm going to finish the new video today. And in the evening, after Ingrid's work, we will probably go to another city and probably we'll have a drink there. So now we are in one of the main cities, we are attending a local party. It's super typical party in summer, since you are a teenager, you go them, they are free.
Good morning from rainy Catalonia. Well, in fact, rain just stopped just recently. That's why I went outside. Uh, but yeah, our plans for today changed a little bit because we were supposed to celebrate Ingrid's birthday, firstly in the restaurant and then go to the beach. I think right now we just go to the restaurant and maybe to the bar afterwards. And here is my present. Yay! Case for IMAX. Are you happy? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I was trying to buy uh, to Ingrid very good Italian Prosecco and I couldn't find this yesterday in four shops. Yes. It's not popular here, right? No. Where's the girl? On the beers, they will try some amazing fish dishes and of course paella. Oh my god, my friends, it was so fresh, so good. In this video, I also want to share with you what locals think about life in Spain, including its benefits and drawbacks. Let's ask Ingrid Franz for their opinion. I have already lived in Spain for 20 years. I'm from Ukraine and what I like the most about Spain is weather, beautiful beaches, the kindness of the people, the amazing food and the gastronomy. The parties in Spain are awesome and you won't find any like them anywhere else. The thing I like the least is politics and how our government is currently working. Additionally, the issue of occupation is also a concern. In Spain, there are a lot of occupants. The country's law don't do anything about it. Occupants can enter your house and no one can get them out. You may go on holiday and find out that someone has occupied your house and there is nothing you can do about it. If you call the police, they cannot do anything about it either. So they take your house and you lose it without being able to do anything to prevent or avoid it. What I like the most about Spain is the food. The variety of the exquisite cuisine, as well as the talented chefs we have. Additionally, the beautiful festivities and traditions are something I truly cherish. They bring us together with our family and friends every year. You mentioned that you like fie fiestas, discos. What ah. are your favorite ones? I don't mean a fiesta like a party at a discotheque, but rather a traditional festivity like San Juan. I personally prefer this kind of traditional gathering and festivities over a typical party experience because it's all about coming together with family and friends. We all typically head over to our Catalan countryside house, which is called the Mas. While you're there, you make a fire, you have dinner with your whole family, and you fire some firecrackers. One thing I don't like about living in Spain is the lack of financial support from the government for cultural and art institutions. It's really disappointing because nowadays it's quite difficult for people to afford and to be able to enjoy cultural experiences due to the high prices involved. One other thing I don't really like is the bullfighting. It should be banned everywhere, but unfortunately it's only banned in Catalonia and the Canary Islands. The next day we came to the town next to Ingres village. Bomblanc is a medieval town as you can see it's surrounded by walls. Mm -hmm. It's super pretty and it's super well preserved. It's a very tiny town. There are just about 7,000 people here. This is how a local bakery from a small Spanish town looks like. Ingres said it's very typical. When visited such a tiny town, I always love to see small, small houses like this. Just look, wow. Ingrid and I were discussing right now that it's so cool to travel around Catalonia because many places are different and the destinations are not so huge, right? On the other side, when I'm thinking about traveling in Russia, I, all I can think of is huge, I, I don't know, distance between the places. So I can't just go to every town and it will take maybe four hours by train and etc. Not one hour by car or 30 minutes. And for me, traveling in Russia, it was that towns are more or less the same. It's worth traveling for some natural aspects. Also around the town, 
see this tattoos. You can see everywhere little wineries. In this map, you can see that there are in every little town. Those towns are tiny towns, but they have winers. And that's why we decided to check out one this morning. Since Ingrid works in the hotel, they have a possibility of free wine tastings so that they could promote it later to their clients. And this is exactly what we did. We came to this winery, which is considered to be one of the best in Spain, not just Catalonia. We learned a lot about wine production and how they produce wine in this region. It was super interesting. Yes, I think one friend who works. We have to try just a small, small one, then you can throw it away or you can sip it. But then you have to make like a normal thing. But first, a little wine to open your taste. Mm, okay. This winery produces the best wine in Catalonia for already so many years, which is super impressive. And an interesting fact, how to find out that the wine is good, is that if you had an aftertaste, after drinking wine for quite a long time, it means it's a good wine. If you don't have an aftertaste, it means it's not a good wine. Even the New York Times wrote about them. I also want to tell you an interesting story that in the past few hundred years ago this place was a farm with lots of and thousands and thousands of chickens. That's why uh, the owners when they created a winery they really wanted to combine the past and the current and they also do lots of charity work they uh, organize once in a year concert with the music and wine tasting and all the money goes to charity. And also they have another project. And I decided to become a small part of it. I bought a bottle of wine. And if you can see him, it's a chicken. And there is one center for disability people. And once in a year, people who is a part of the center, they paint something with chickens. Then they choose the best one. And once in a year is becoming an emblem of the wine. And also the percentage uh, of the cost of the wine goes every year to the center. So I decided to become a part of it and even a little bit, tiny percentage to help people. After the winery, I returned to Barcelona for a week, but then I came to countryside again. First, I came to Tarragona to meet with my good friend from studies in Austria. I saw some local celebrations and even went to a reggae concert in the evening. But the next day, we continue our exploration of the country. I am such a tourist now. <laughs> Today we are in Valderrobles. This is a medieval town, as you can see, all made by stones and super pretty. It's one of the most iconic towns in Spain. It has a sign of it. And we stopped by because we wanted to go to some natural pools and we are going to do a hike today. This is absolutely beautiful. Like the style of how this town is structured and the river and the mountains. Traveling in Spain, traveling in Spain, <laughs> traveling in Spain is absolute pleasure. I, I'm gonna miss it so much. I'm gonna miss this towns. Thank you so much for taking me here, Ingrid. <laughs> You're welcome. I mean, just look at this. How incredible, beautiful, really. I, I have no words. Let's go and check out the town. We just came to a local cemetery and I wanted to point out, look at these graves. There is, I think it's a history of Jesus. And if we go a little bit, can we come uh, to different graves? There are different moments of his life. Oh my God, it's an eagle. And in the end of the city, you could see that there was a fire. And 
the water. I'm gonna jump. Later, we came to another town next to the hiking trail to have some lunch. So, it's time for lunch before the hike. We have a goat cheese salad. Here we have tortilla de patata. It's an omelet with potatoes and onions. And also, as always, they bring some bread with tomato and olive oil. As well. And this is an interesting dish. This so one. this is a, a scrambled eggs with asparagus, shrimps and spring onion. Super tasty. Yeah, let's try it out. Yep. The lunch was good, but later it was time for the new adventure. What a lovely weather. <laughs> This is super nice right now. First of all, it's not a difficult hike. It can be, can be called a nice walk around. And I think there are no tourists because there was a forecast of rain and I think they saw it, so they didn't come. But we already had tickets. It cost five euros and parking was included in the price. So we decided just why not to try it. The good thing, it's not raining right now and it's not hot because during the day it was horribly hot, around 30 degrees. So let's see how it's going to be. Uh, the hike will take around three hours, three hours and a half, and it's nine kilometers. And here is my nightmare. I don't know if you could see it, but there is a tiny snake. Oh my God. So, there should be water downstairs, but it's not. Anyways, super beautiful, right? Yes. Was it difficult for you? No, not at all. Not at I'm all. not used to do any kind of sport, any <laughs> hike, and it was crazy. Okay, perfect. The only thing that I cannot not mention is the dryness issue of Spain. Ingrid, can you please show the surroundings? There should be a river, and unfortunately right now, like in most parts of Spain, especially in the south Spain and in Catalonia, there is a huge problem of dryness. So guys, global warming is real. Let's take care of our planet and not waste as much water as we used to do in the past, because this one is very sad view. Hello my friends, so the hiking finished and right now we return back to the city to have some dinner. To be honest, we are super tired. Overall, it took us 2 hours and 40 minutes to hike there. It wasn't so difficult, it was absolutely enjoyable. And we were actually super lucky because it was very stormy weather. But when it started raining just a little bit and then it finished. So we returned back um, like without being so wet like we were in Ibiza. Check out this video if you haven't seen that before. Uh, and yeah, let's check out some local dishes. We are gonna try now hidden eggs. It's a variety of crushed eggs that usually it's made of crisps, jamon and fried eggs. The thing that is that you have to mix all together, like you have to cut it like this. Oh my god, <laughs> kind of a difficult. Cut the jamon and then you have to mix everything like this and you eat it like in a bite with jamon, crisps and eggs. Could be better. <laughs> For my main dish, I've chosen calmaras on the grill. And yeah, it looks amazing. I honestly expected the portion gonna be a bit bigger. It cost 13 euros, so dish. But let's try. Mmm, super good. It melts in your mouth. The only thing, it's a bit salty for me. The rest is fine. And Ingrid, what did you take? <laughs> I took like pork, I don't know the name in English, but in Spanish it's secreto and it's a very good meat from the pig. Try it out. Let me try it. And it's made on the grill, like directly from the fire. Mm. <laughs> Super good. Meat is soft, meat is tasty and you can feel the uh, fire, <laughs> the wood flavor. In the end we paid around 50 euros for two main dishes, salad and potatoes and I think it was quite fine, we even had some leftovers for tomorrow. It's written on the bridge that the logo sergeant is going to marry the girl Sonia. Well, that's what life in small towns be like.
Okay, it's a new hiking. Here behind me you can see some natural pools and our plan was to chill in the pools today but it's cold. <laughs> we are not going to do that. We are not that brave. So right now we are going to another hiking. And by the way, I really want to do hiking because right now I am on the best score for uh, steps that I do per, per month. And for all the year, right now I am in 16,200 steps. So I hope after this hike today, I'm going to do my best of the year. Are you ready? Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's totally worth watching for a podcast. And here is the abandoned process that we saw at the top. It's a little bit reminds me of American state Arizona from the pictures that I saw on the internet. Maybe not so green, uh, but oh, the United state. I don't know, it reminds me of something from the USA that I saw on the YouTube. So please let me know if I'm saying the truth. Okay guys, right now we are already in another town. The hike was perfect. It took us three hours to complete the hike. Once we made a small mistake and went to another trail, trail to the mountains where they are, but it's all right. Fantastic. And you know the most interesting thing? We absolutely found this by accident because we firstly wanted to visit one town which is on the way from the previous one when we slept. There was reconstruction, so we had to turn to another road. And then Ingrid said, Dasha, there are some, some crystal water. Do you want to check it out? I'm like, yeah, sure. So we've been driving for like 15 minutes or 20 minutes, and then we found the national park. And the guy said, oh, you could, could go hiking there. And we're like, okay, why not? And we did this, okay, absolutely perfect. I'm so happy about this, that best things always happen by accident. After a quick coffee, we decided to explore this lovely town. And oh my God, it took my breath away. Just look at the landscape. Look at these mountains around, the monastery also that you can see, and the town itself is fascinating, super cute, I love it a lot. I'm gonna miss living in Spain so much. In the end of this video, I really wanted to ask Ingrid what she thinks about advantages and disadvantages of life in Spain. What are your thoughts? So, it's not about disadvantages, I think it's personal opinion. <laughs> what I like the most, variety. That's the word. Like, we have different cultures in every region of Spain. It's just one country, but with difference. Mm -hmm. We have different climate, not different, different, but Microclimates. I we think it's different, like from the south and from the north. I think yeah. it's very different. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> yeah. Also, culture, languages. We have five languages, official languages in all country. Uh, every region is proud of itself. We don't hate each other. Like it's variety. It's like diversity. I mm -hmm. love it. But on the other hand, I said that we don't each, uh, hate each other, but some politicians does. Okay. That's one thing that I don't like. Mm -hmm. There is some parties from the right side. For example, they want to ban Catalan language on schools. Oh my God. They say that it's brainwashing for children, that it's not true, of course, and it's Catalo bullshit. Yeah, it's Catalonia is like a separate country, like yes. everybody thinks so at least here. Yeah. That's why politicians want just to unite Spain oh, in yeah, one and about. they want to ban the language. Another thing that I like is our warm. Yes. <laughs> As we talked in our previous video about difference between Russia and Spain, 
check it out, <laughs> is that we are super warm, we are welcoming, we love to hug people, to express our feelings, that I love it. I have been living abroad and when you don't feel this and you are used to it, mm. it's so different, so yes. super difficult. Just to be agree with my friends, I think politics is not right at the moment, salaries maybe. But you still can live normally for yourself. Exactly, we can afford living, mm -hmm. but it should be better, okay, of course. Yes, I can understand. <laughs> Then I think overall I like Spain, I love it, all weather, warm um, people, festivities, traditions, I agree totally with my friends, but of course nothing's perfect, Spain is not perfect there are things that they are not good but from all the countries you've been to i think you yeah. want to, mo to live in spain the yeah. most i know that i will not be living here forever like always but i will always want to return okay that's amazing words ingrid thank you so much for showing me everything it's actually three days left for me in spain and oh my god i'm gonna miss you so much me ingrid too. is moving to new zealand and It's a news for, for my channel, but I'm moving to another continent for quite a long time. So we probably will not see each other for a long time, but who knows, life's a, life is a very interesting thing. Yes. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. We really appreciate this. Please tell thank you to Ingrid in the comments because she is the, like, the person who made this video like, to show all the places. Really. I love you so much, girl. I'm going to miss you, you so much. <laughs> Goodbye! Bye.